is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am Bob pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 bmw x1 courtesy of apple bmw in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below we are in this one today because this is a bmw that starts in the mid thirty thousand dollar range which is pretty remarkable in itself but not only that you do get three years or thirty six thousand miles of complimentary maintenance with this as well and really any bmw for that matter but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so but having said all that as always let's start with pricing and so there are two different configurations for the x1 first one is the s drive 28i that one starts at thirty five thousand four hundred dollars then there is the x drive 28i that is going to start at thirty seven thousand four hundred dollars but so regardless of which configuration that you go with the power plant on the x1 is going to be the same powering the little beast is a two liter twin power turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 228 horsepower at 5,000 rpm 258 pound feet of torque coming in at right around 1400 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels that was the s drive as the front wheel drive x drive being the all-wheel drive of course through an eight-speed automatic zero to 60 time is going to come in at 6.6 .6 seconds for the front wheel drive 6.3 then for the all-wheel drive so a little bit quicker there mpg numbers coming in at 24 in the city 33 on the highway for the front wheel drive 23 city 31 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our X1, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually some drive mode buttons located just to the left of the shifter. They will include Eco, Pro, Comfort, and Sport, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and throw it in that sport driving mode. Let's put the acceleration here to the test. I'll give you guys a disclaimer here. It is raining. I got my automatic windshield wipers on, so that's a pretty cool feature on this thing as well but nonetheless it is raining hopefully we get some decent traction and let's see how quickly we can get our new x1 here up to speed all right so i am in sport driving mode and here we go in three two one off we go nice love the quick shifts definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway and actually Grip wasn't that bad either. There was a smidge bit of turbo lag ever so slightly, but still, that was a very impressive acceleration. It did feel very quick, so 100% not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so four wheel ventilated disc brakes actually do come standard. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's gonna come in at 122 feet, which is pretty on point, pretty average for the segment there. As far as braking feel goes, it's excellent. That's one of the things I said when I first got in this one. It feels perfectly fine. There's no dead spots or anything like that. So braking feels 100% on point as well. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, gas pressurized shock absorbers. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually really nice. Honestly, for a smaller SUV, you typically are, you typically tend to feel a good bit more of the road, but with this one, it absorbs a lot of Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely it's not going to be as smooth as a 7 series or anything like that but it is doing quite well i will say that so i'm pretty impressed there as far as steering feel goes that's always the first thing i noticed when i get an x1 i think a couple years ago when i reviewed this one again i noticed the same thing it's a very heavily weighted steering feel which is a good thing i personally prefer that it gives you better driver feedback instantly pointing you in the direction that you want to go so if anything the steering feel on this is wonderful especially compared to a lot of its competitors i think i've always been a fan of the steering feel on the x1 so that's definitely very nice as far as cabin noise goes there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise or road noise really coming into the cabin there's a little bit of rain noise because it's raining but other than that it's really not all that bad so no issues there either touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back so shouldn't have any issues there and of course rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard we have had them on and actually is lighting up the windshield wiper stock here in green it says auto so that tells you that you got your rain sensing windshield wipers on and it is doing a wonderful job here as it is still raining in pi i think it's going to clear up here in a little bit but anyways head up display is also going to be available with what's called a premium two package that goes for four thousand one hundred dollars by the way we do have that package 
package. So I am right now looking at an illuminated speed as well as the speed limit. It's also gonna project safety features up onto my windshield as well. So that's gonna assist with visibility yet again. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 BMW X1. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 BMW X1 finished in Phytonic Blue Metallic, if I even said that right. But that is our exterior color that we have on our X1 here today. Let's go ahead and start up front on this one. BMW Active Kidney Front Grille, of course, coming standard in typical BMW fashion. To the sides, halogen headlights actually do come standard. They come with the automatic feature, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard LED headlights with the cornering function coming with the premium two package so That's actually what we have today and the cornering function is actually pretty cool Essentially what that means is when you're going around the bend at night The headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend So you're less likely to hit a deer or a squirrel or whatever the case so that is pretty cool It's a nice little safety feature I did want to also mention though there is an M sport package that goes for four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars that really gives you a a completely different look to the X1. Get a lot more body colored accents on the front, on the sides, on the back as well. A lot more gloss black exterior trim. Essentially all the aluminum trim that we have on our X1 here today is going to be replaced with gloss black in case you were curious about that. And also M specific wheels and you get some fog lights down below in the front corners of that front fascia then as well. So quite a bit of changes with the M Sport that we don't have today. So I'm not going to mention it too much after this, but did want to mention it from the get-go. So we do have the aluminum trim found on the lower portion of that front bumper or the front lip there otherwise it is going to be body colored if you go with the m sport just for a simple example there but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the x1 let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right now since we are around to the side of this one you're either going to get aluminum or gloss black roof rails all the way to the top aluminum or gloss black window surrounds of course depending upon which configuration that you go with rear privacy glass is going to come standard across the board so that's pretty nice body colored power adjustable sign mirrors do come standard they will be heated as well with led integrated turn signals as you guys are currently looking out there matte black or body colored side skirts and you do get some of those aluminum trim accents if you don't go with the m sport like we have today taking a look at the wheel configuration 18 inch y spoke alloys coming standard i actually love the wheel design that we have here it looks really really good 18 inch m specific alloy wheels then coming with the m sport package but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the X1. And so, but now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body color shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Of course, you have the X drive badging found on the rear lift gate there. If you were to go with the X drive configuration, of course, all the way to the bottom, you're either going to get, again, aluminum trim accents on the bottom portion of the rear bumper or body color accents if you were to go with the M Sport, but to the sides, dual exhaust outlets with very thick chrome tips. Probably some of the thicker tips that I've seen in a while. But anyways, as always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, and so but now since we are around to the back of the X1, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is actually a hands-free power tailgate coming standard across the board, which is pretty cool. There is a button on the key fob as well. There's a button on the tailgate itself, and there's a button on the driver's side door then as well to go ahead and open that up. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 27.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, those rear seats, of course, do fold down, bumping that up to 58.7 cubic feet. There is a 12-volt power outlet you can find back there there is some cargo lighting of course there's also some grocery bag hooks which is pretty cool you have a little bit of indented storage there to the left you have a little bit of netted storage then to the right but then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find actually a decent amount of in-floor storage more so than i usually find on other suvs so considering the size of the x1 the fact that it has this much in-floor storage is pretty darn cool you can fit an ice scraper back there maybe a tire inflator kit and all kinds of other things so pretty nice i like that instead of making our way up to the rear leg room that is going to come in at an even 37 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation, of course, does come standard. Just below that rear ventilation, you will find two phone charging ports. Rear center armrest with cup holders then also coming standard for those rear passengers. 
but let's now go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Eight-way power driver's seat does come standard. Sense of tech upholstery is gonna be the standard finish for all the seating. But I will say there is Dakota leather available that goes for $1,450 if you wanted to go that route. Heated front seats as a standalone option go for $500. It's also included in some of the package options. We do have those heated seats. So definitely very nice on this colder-ish day here in Pennsylvania. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, since we have the power lumbar as well, definitely plenty adjustable. So no issues with the seat comfort in this thing. Then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. The 10 and 2 grips are pretty darn nice as well. And it does come leather wrapped across the board as well, which is pretty nice. Then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons essentially are located on one side of the key. You got lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate there. But by the way, the lock button is going to be the BMW logo. If you are unfamiliar with BMW, that's the way they do it. But ultimately, it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that engine start button located just kind of underneath and to the right of the gauges. And so speaking of, upon startup, speedometer is all the way to your left, tachometer is on your right. There's a very small digital display front and center towards the bottom, giving you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty, trip A, trip B, outside temperature, your basics basically. So essentially you're really not gonna need too much more than that. Touching on overall interior quality, there is a panoramic moonroof that comes with the M Sport and also the convenience package for $2,250 if you did not have the M Sport. We do have that panoramic moonroof, so essentially it's a dual pane panoramic moonroof, so the rear passengers kind of get their own as well, so that's pretty cool. Anthracite headliner coming standard, auto dimming rear view mirror with homeland controls to up to three different garage doors, and that's found, of course, just underneath of that rear view mirror, so that's pretty cool. Ambient lighting coming with the premium two package, so we do have that, and I'll be able to show that to you guys here. Dual zone climate control coming standard, meaning both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures i do love the wood trim here you can find that on the doors it carries on just above the passenger side glove box just below the infotainment screen as well so that is pretty darn nice i like the contrast stitching as well just above the passenger side glove box also just in front of the shifter you have a 12 volt power outlet usb charging port a little bit of storage dual cup holders an electromechanical parking brake and within the center armrest hey we got a wireless phone charger that's pretty darn cool so that's where that's going to go apparently and if you lift up that center armrest that is where you're going to be able to have a little bit of storage right there but ultimately it's finished pretty darn nice like i said i love the wood trim the contrast stitching the ambient lighting very nice interior quality here on the x1 so very impressed but anyways let's now go ahead and take a look at that infotainment screen i was mentioning 8.8 .8 inch color touchscreen display yes it is a touchscreen but there is a circular dial and buttons as well located just behind the shifter so really either way is perfectly fine bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard android auto apple carplay as well factory navigation system actually also coming standard that's pretty cool you can adjust your ambient lighting settings up there you can check out different driving statistics like average miles per gallon at any given time and of course also your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there's two of them the standard sound system is a seven speaker hi-fi sound system with 205 watts that's the one we have today then there's an optional 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that goes for $875 that gives you 360 watts but again we don't have that one today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out our seven speaker sound system that we have here today actually not that bad believe it or not seven speakers doesn't sound like a whole lot but i think because of the size of this suv not really being all that big seven speakers works great actually decent amount of bass with that hi-fi sound system as well so quite honestly I don't mind it. And actually the speaker covers are pretty darn cool as well. They're very heavy duty found on the doors here. So actually a decent sound system here for the X1, even without it being the Harman Kardon. But anyways, last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put the X1 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, but not only that driver, and passenger knee airbags as well. You typically don't get both of those. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, real child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, frontal collision warning, lane departure warning, speed limit recognition, and front 
and rear parking sensors as well. A lot of times rear parking sensors will come standard on luxury vehicles, but the front ones typically won't. There'll be a package option or an added option of some sort. But anyways, adaptive cruise control with stop and go and active driving assist. That is an option for $1,000 and you also have a parking assistant that goes for 200 where the car is essentially gonna park itself. So but anyways, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the X1, very nice acceleration. I was a big fan of the acceleration. It shifted very quickly as well. So plenty of power in this thing. Good starting price point. Again, this thing starts at the mid $30,000 range. Having said that, there's quite a bit of options you could tack on, but still great starting price point nonetheless. Free complimentary maintenance is pretty impressive as well because it's three years, 36,000 miles. So a lot of manufacturers, I knew Toyota I think does two years. So, but a lot of manufacturers don't do any of that. So that is pretty cool. Also the steering feel is weighted definitely on the heavier side of things, which I personally appreciate. And I love the ambient lighting in this thing as well. So quite honestly, not a whole lot of negatives that I can think of. This thing pretty much has absolutely everything you could possibly want, maybe with the exception of some rear window sunshades, but that's really all I got. Let me know what you guys think of the X1 in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.